Well, it's time to, uh, I guess, start a tradition that I'm probably not going to keep up with of making something uh, spooky from Terraria in the spooky season. And to start, of course, I need an armature. As most of my Terraria projects do, barring very few. And, of course, for that armature, I get two paper clips and connect them at the chest area with some aluminum foil. Uh, b apparently be careful with aluminum foil. I cut myself on it this time, as you will see later. And then I covered that in a base layer of blue clay, which most of the body will have. And then I pose the, well, the limbs in all of the various ways that they need to go. Once I had the legs posed, I could somewhat pose the arms, but in a mostly final position, as well as cut them to the proper size. Now that the armature is practically complete, I can cover the legs in some blue clay, as most of this body for the superhero zombie gets covered in blue clay, as that's the main, main color. Both of these legs get covered, and I also pinch out the, well, the shape to make it look like legs. I pinch out a knee at the front, and a gap behind where I put that knee, and then also kind of push all the other stuff together to make it look like it's... It's clumping, I guess. And then I remove the knee of the leg that is towards the back. And in that removed knee, I add some red. And after the red, I use a ball stylus to make it look all bloodied, battered, and bruised. And a little bit better. And then I add some white, some slightly off-white clay to act as bones. And then give it a kneecap. After I have the kneecap, I surround it with some worms of lime green clay that I'm using as the zombie skin. And then, while well, I go on to the next cut and bruise or whatever, which is just a splotch of green. Then red inside of that, rolled with a ball stylus. And then I add the shoes. However, I'm not done with those cuts and bruises. The shoes are just balls that get smushed down onto the ground, but the cuts and the, the rips it's surrounded by a blue worm to make it look like these are actually under the costume and not on top of it. Because this is an actual zombie in a superhero costume. So now that that's been spoken, I smooth out all of the areas of blue into the other blue. And then I pat up the front of the, bo of the chest in order to make it so that I can add in the fake muscles, which is just what I'm calling it. Then I expand out the sides to make it look more proportional. And then I add a small sheet to the back just to make everything look just about the same. Just to give it all a uniform appearance. After I have all of those, I blend them into the rest of the blue. And then I add a, another uh, flat piece to the front of the chest that I can use to add the muscles. Which I then do. I add an indent down the middle and then two indents going up to give him a proper fake six pack. After that, I add two larger circles that are flattened to give him bicep, no, pecs, yeah. These get mostly blended in, but to the point where you can still, till, still tell that it is a raised area. And the center is somewhat indented, but less so than I show there. And then I take a massive chunk out of the side and fill it with red because I wanted an exposed rib cage. I smush it with a ball stylus to make sure it's flat, then wrap it a little bit with some green worms to make sure that the skin is showing, and then I add the blue, the actual costume that this zombie would be wearing around the massive gap in his, ch in his chest. And once that's all blended in, I can add some ribs. These ribs are just worms that are slightly curved, and it is two of them separately this time, and they just get poked until they look good enough. After that, I add two worms around the tops of the shoes in order to make them look slightly more like boots because I felt that that might be better. It, I mean, it's not worse. I don't know. I don't really have much thoughts about it. I think it looks pretty good. After that, I can add the undies on top, which is which I just do by having a bunch of flat sheets of clay that are very thin so that I can position them so that they cover the proper amount of area that I want them to cover. And of course, after I get all of them covered, I do what I usually do and just blend them all together. Not into the blue, though, only in the specific color that they have. 
once all of the undies are blended together, I can, well, continue to blend them together, add any extra clay where it's necessary, and then in that little cut from earlier, I can remove some clay so that it looks kind of like it was torn off. Then I add the two arms, which are just the same thing as the legs, kind of, except elbows instead of knees, they're flipped around a little bit. These get blended in, slightly blended into the shoulder area, and also attached on both sides, like arms are. I'm not doing a missing arm for this, I'm doing two arms. Hands are a different story. These get pretty much the same treatment, just and a bicep is added on where the bicep would be, and just the elbow is thickened. The bicep is added on both sides, the elbow is positioned on both sides, however, because I felt the thickness on one was better than the thickness on the other, I added a little bit extra clay to make it look more uniform between both of the two arms. Once I have the arms looking pretty similar, I can start work on the left arm, which I'm just going to add a ball of green, then a little flashy to red, then ball stylus them, and then add a little bone in the middle of the hands, because there is no hand, it's just a wrist. Then the other one, I actually make the proper hand that I like to make, which is just a mitten. I pinch out a thumb, a little area for the hand to get sticked into, and then I push it into the wrist area, except this time I add a little bit of red, because it's zombie blood. <laughs> what was that? After this, I decided that I wanted to have the zombie holding something, and I just make a purple teardrop shape, then a purple worm that's flattened and then curled up, and then those two are blended together in order to make a goodie bag. The goodie bag has a orange strap around it, and I decided to give it a knot to make it look like it can actually be opened, and because there isn't that on the actual design, I guess. And then the, probably a pumpkin on the front, which is just a orange circle, a green stem, and two black eyes. This gets placed into the, the zombie's only hands, and then made to look okay. And because it was off balance at this point, I get a slightly darkish green base, and stick the zombie into it so that I, I don't have to worry about it being off balance. Now I focus on making the head, which is just a green thing that gets pushed into the head. The, well, the, the, the body. This gets blended in so that it definitely won't fall off later. And then I cover up the area around it, which is basically just the shoulders in the front, because a cape will be covering it in the near future, the back in the near future. But I still needed the, the shoulders. I add some clay for the shoulders, blend those into the body, add some clay on the front, blend that into the blue as well. And then I re-indent the chest area. And once that is re-indented, I can use a ball stylus or other tool similar to create a mouth. A very wide mouth that then gets made even wider. And I put some blood red into the, that mouth to make it look like blood, I guess. Then I add a little circle right above that for the nose. After that, I add a worm around the entirety of the lips in order to make it look more betterer. And then, once that's blended in, I can add two rows of teeth. I probably should have made these yellows, but I gave them some pearly whites. Once all that's done, I can add some blood red, as per usual. And then the hair. The hair is black hair, like some other ordinary zombies. And to, for usual, I just start by covering up all the areas that I want covered in hair, and then building up from there. At first setting the spike on the back, then the little swooshes and the hair built up on top of the head. And then after that, I just add the spike in the middle of the head, spike the other spike in the front of the head. You know, just stuff like that, I guess. This all gets somewhat blended together to make it look like one solid piece. The black doesn't get so the black doesn't get blended into the green, green not into blue, blue not into red, red not into you get it. After the hair is done. I can add the mask, where I scrunch up two little spots to make it have it a little bit extra clay than the rest of the mask. That is where the eyes are going to be. I push this in front of the thing, having it rest along the nose, and then I have it wrapped all the way around the head with no knot or anything of such this time. And then <clears throat> I use a ball stylus to put out where the area where the eyes are going to be, and then I put the eyes there. 
Once the eyes are there, I go back over with the ball stylus, and then I give them blood red eyes. Once they have their blood red eyes, I can reattach the head to the body because it fell off earlier, and then flatten a yellow sheet of clay, then make it more rectangular, add a little indent in the top to make it so that he can wear the cape, and once he has, there's a little indent in the top so that he can wear the cape, I cut it to the proper size so that it's the proper size. And once it's the proper size, I can attach it to the back to cover up all my imperfections and then put it right where the neck is to cover more imperfections. Then because I thought the cape looked too perfect, I just kind of tore a bunch of stuff from it to make it look more ragged. And once I thought that it did, I positioned it to be better, and it's done. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. If you want to see more, like it, subscribe. And always remember, stay spooky.